And the skills of the marketeer have changed enormously because that definition of creativity or the definition of our industry is so broad, broad now, covering data analytics and media and, and all areas, the skills of the marketeer have got to be much broader too. And I, and I would argue the skills have got to encompass the sales organization as well. Amazon, for example, is very focused on the sales function. It's very focused on that 400 billion of trade budget that, uh, that exists. And so you, the, the marketeer has to think about marketing and sales as one, particularly in a, a digital area, in a era. So the skills demanded are very broad, uh, very wide, and that's needed because to counterbalance this pressure that we've seen since Lehman and the rise of the cost pressure that we've seen and the rise of procurement and finance. I mean, I, if I was trying to sort of show you, I mean, maybe in 2008, marketing was up here and finance and procurement was here, but in terms of power balance, and the, the balance has certainly got to there. And I would argue that procurement and finance has become more powerful than marketing. I think that balance has to be redressed. And one of the ways of redressing it is to make sure that the marketeer has as broad a capability, you know, covering information technology, and covering data too. Advertising and marketing now is like running an election campaign without an election date. And you know, if I think about the last 48, 72 hours, we've had you know, Apple TV launched, Apple launching a credit card with Goldman, you know, which turns um, the financial services industry upside down, and the media industry you know, poses more, more issues for SVODs, uh, for free-to-air television, content providers, etc. And we've had regulatory um, measures announced by the EU in relation to copyright and YouTube, etc. So, you know, just within a very short period of time, we've had a couple of things happen which are pretty fundamental and change the rules of the game quite significantly. So you have to be continuously reactive. It's not just sending out messages, it's reacting to inbound stuff. So you have to create a loop. That's why I liken it to election campaign. You have the data, that informs the content. You pump out the content. You see how the consumer reacts. You refine the content. It's like a loop. It is extraordinary to me how every conversation you have is punctuated with this frustration. I'm talking about analog or legacy companies who have digital opportunities or developing digital businesses. It's incredible. The, 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 the moaning, the frustration, the annoyance. The, uh, it, it, you, you spend hours talking about this and how can you change the approach uh, you know, it, to, to, to accelerate the transition from, from analog to digital. John Brown's speech in 1997 where he said, you know, it, he didn't term it, frame it in terms of purpose, he termed it in terms of long-term thinking, and I think that is the point. Mark Ritson's commentary about, that, you know, you have to sacrifice profit if you, really, if you really mean purpose. Yeah, I think that's right in the short term, but not the long term, because if you do the right thing, i.e. think about the long term and don't offend your stakeholders, and there are myriad groups of uh, stakeholders, if you don't, if you do follow that, that, that theory and implement it, your long-term profitability will be greater. So you might have to sacrifice something in the short term, but long term you'll be better off. I think that's key. And all of these things around, you know, some things we've been talking about before around ZBB and the pressure that there's been on the marketing function to strip out resources because the cost has been too high, that probably has been short-sighted. And we've seen with ZBB not the collapse of ZBB, because these, the people who run ZBB companies are very smart. They're going to course correct. And they will do more in innovation, and they'll do more in branding, which is great for us, and great for the marketing function. By the way, you can have, you can have uh, innovation without branding, but you can't have branding without innovation. So the key is innovation, and that's long-term as well, too. You have to invest, you, know, you have to speculate to accumulate, if you like, and you have to invest, and invest in branding too. But by and large, we're seeing a little bit of a redressing of the balance between the short and the long term, which I think is good news.
and people who were chastised for being too long term in their view now probably are gaining, gaining a little bit of momentum. I have been saying, I will say it in the first person singular, for years, they have to admit they are media companies, not technology companies. You know, I did the CAN debate, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and we had a, Nikesh Aurora, he was then at Google, we had, we had Facebook, we had, uh, I think it was Yahoo, and my first question in the CAN debate was, are you a technology or a media company? They all said they were technology companies. They are not, they are media companies in the areas that we're talking about. So they have to acknowledge it, and they've sort of acknowledged it. They haven't quite got there, but they've sort of acknowledged it because they've got people there for editorial content. So they have made efforts, but they've got to make more efforts. You have an oligopoly, you have Google, you have 200 billion, Google's 125, Facebook is 50, it's 175, and Amazon's number three, 10 and rising, or 12 and rising. That's, you know, we, we haven't had that, that situation before. I call them the seven sisters for, for, for you know, that's, that's plus uh, Apple and Microsoft. And then you can say, you know, there are 10 companies, you put Adobe and uh, Salesforce and Oracle. And the beneficiaries of any sort of deconsolidation or regulatory breakup would be the software companies it w and Microsoft. So if you did something about the fearsome five, as I call them, probably can't do much about Alibaba and Tencent unless the Chinese government do, and I think the Chinese government are worried about it too. If you don't, if, if something happens on that, then it's probably the software companies, the three that I mentioned, that are probably going to benefit along with Microsoft, which is quite ironic given Microsoft had its own problems many years ago. Um, yeah, I think it's sort of, sort of the pressure is on.